So I'm a conservative. Um, one thing I have a hard time rationalizing to my liberal friends, and one and uh, conservatives on TV and in, you know politicians have a hard time articulating is intelligent reasons why the wall must be built. I am curious your thoughts on that. Three quick things. Number one, I'm going to say some facts. I'm going to talk about fairness. Then I'm going to talk about sovereignty. Some facts. An illegal alien in the state of Arizona is twice as likely to commit a crime versus a natural born citizen. Fact. 90% of all heroin and fentanyl come across the southern border. Fact. Over 10,000 kids are illegally sex trafficked across the southern border every single year. Fact. We have 56,000 illegal immigrants in our federal prison system. Fact. And countless in our state pen pen penitentiary system. $135 billion a year. That's how much is the financial burden on U.S. taxpayers every single year that illegal immigrants drain from our system. Fact. You put all that together, that's a pretty compelling argument that we have some problems with our southern border. That's, those are some facts. Number two is fairness. As Candace said, it is not fair to the people in Bolivia. It's not fair to the people in Bangladesh. It is not fair to the people in Belarus that had to wait in line, fill out an application form, not commit a crime, and then wait a decade to come into this country to maybe have a chance to become an American. It is not fair to them. Number three is sovereignty. Why do walls matter? Why do borders matter? Borders are a physical representation of when good ideas begin and bad ideas start. If you don't believe me, just ask East and West Germany or at North or South Korea. If you believe in open borders, you do not believe in the physical delineation of where good ideas start and bad ideas start. The wall right now is not only important for facts, not only important for the facts I mentioned in the fairness, but also the sovereignty. We are not Mexico. We have a unique culture. We have a unique identity. The Mexican culture is something that should be appreciated and understood, but our culture is much different and has outpaced them over the last 50 years. And to say that we should have open borders and we should have some sort of transfer, transferable citizenship cheapens the idea of the American identity and culture of the people that have waited in line and the tens of millions of immigrants that have to fly halfway across the world to come into this country. So those are the three reasons I would give to build the wall, build it quickly, build it high, build it wide, with a big door so and everyone deep. can come in legally. Thank you. Do you believe that the Constitution is the best document in political history? I Greatest think? political document ever. There you written. go. Thank you. Um, I, I want to know how is it possible to believe that when it's based on racist principles? They describe uh, indigenous peoples as merciless Indian savages. Uh, they don't describe African Americans as full people, and they don't even recognize other people of color and other uh, minority, minorities that we see today. So I just want to know how you think it's possible to believe that's such a great document. We're Thank you for upon. the question. Where does it say that in the document? No, no, Keeper, where, where does it say that in the document? I'm sorry, what? Where does it say what you said in the actual document? Um, uh, I'm not entirely sure. It but doesn't. No, no, no. Uh, it <laughs> instead, instead, do you know what it does say? Provide for the general welfare of all people. I, I preface when I talked about the United States Constitution, you know what's amazing is the amendment process. I love the story of Thaddeus Stevens, who fought like hell to make sure that blacks could have the right to vote. I, I, love, I love the story of the Republican Party, which was founded in 1860 as an anti-slavery party. I, I hate what happened to indigenous people under Democrat presidents. I do. Here's why it's the greatest document ever. is because in a land with so many different backgrounds and languages and cultures in this room, from all over the world, we can peacefully have a conversation while all that's protected simultaneously. Uh, we can agree to disagree, we can have this conversation. What you said is nowhere in the founding documents at all. What you said is what some of the prejudices that was in the people of the founding fathers. This is called a logical fallacy. Tell me why the document is not correct. Don't tell me the sins of the authors. It's a big difference. You mentioned that you don't try to promote Oh boy, you've been through this. Violence. I do not promote violence. 
let's talk about ICE. Let's talk, sure. Yeah. What about ICE? Don't you like? A violent organization. Not right? violent. Yes, they're violent. How? Oh. I'll tell you why I like ICE. They're the number one agency that goes after child sex traffickers. Number one. They arrest tens of thousands of child sex traffickers every single year. They also go after MS-13. They also go after terrorists that are here in the country domestically. ICE was formed after 9-11 to go after international threats that are here domestically. That's why they're called Immigration Customs and Enforcement. They get such a bad rap and you actually meet with the agents, and you see what they do every single day, it's pretty extraordinary work. Now, they do go after people that have visa overstays. It has nothing to do with race. An illegal immigrant is not a race. Most of the visa overstays are people from Hungary or from Indonesia or from Japan. If you are here illegally, you should not be here despite your race. The immigration debate is, is demagogued by politicians by being a racial issue. It's nothing to do with race and everything to do with the rule of law. You talked, Charlie, I think, I think it was you that talked a bit about like the Mueller investigation. Yes. I know you said it was like a waste of time, that kind of thing. I don't know, what, what makes you think it was a waste of time? Because it was about 30 indictments, a couple convictions. Okay. What specifically about it was a waste of time to you? Okay. you know, criminals were exposed. No heckling, no heckling. A court determined that a criminals so, were exposed. So, do you so. Know, what was the basis of the original Russia intelligence investigation in the FBI? Right, so from what I understand, my understanding was that the investigation was opened up to basically understand all the different ways that the Russian Federation has in colluded with so the US What was the piece elections. of intelligence that began the surveillance or the spying, whatever you want to call it, of the Trump campaign? No idea. Okay, but, so yeah. it, it was a dossier right. that was funded by the Democrat National Committee and the Hillary Clinton campaign, constructed by an opposition research firm called Fusion GPS. We have, we, the dossier has been disproven and debunked to have so many inaccuracies and misleading facts and information. So that was put in, for, in, for, in front of a FISA judge. For those of you that don't know what a FISA judge is, that is giving permission for the United States government to surveil its own citizens. Now, there were three members of the Trump campaign that were former individuals at highest level of national security. Chris Christie, Rudy Giuliani, and Lieutenant General Michael Flynn. If the FBI was actually worried about Russia interference, they could have approached Chris Christie, who was a U.S. attorney, Mayor Giuliani, who was a former U.S. attorney, or Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, who held the highest level of security clearance at the highest level of the military, saying, hey, we're worried about Russia interference in your election. We're worried about this Manafort guy. They never did that. Instead, they illegally surveilled and spied on the Trump campaign. So fast forward to April, fast forward to April or May, where the actual Mueller investigation began. Andrew McCabe said it himself that his own internal workings towards getting, getting mul get eventual you know, triggering of the Mueller investigation was based on the phony intelligence of Fusion GPS and based on, the Fusion, and based on this investigation. But you said 30 indictments. Let's break this down. Who was indicted? Paul Manafort is going to prison, not for Russia interference, my friend. Yeah, for tax fraud, yeah. Right, right, tax fraud, wire fraud, and unregistered yeah. foreign lobbying for Ukraine, not even for, for Russia. Okay. Lieutenant uh, that's kind of Ukraine and Russia there. There's a little bit of a... War? Well, there's a war. The war, yes, but like, right. keep in mind, yeah. I mean, saying that no, it's not okay. it, as, as a fair point, I think, you know, not to say I, that there isn't a I, connection. I can see where there. you're coming from there. Yeah. yeah, I understand. There's a lot of cross nationality. Yeah, it's really tough to. Sure. Yeah. There could so be the, second, the second major indictment was George Papadopoulos, yep. who lied under oath to the FBI. No Russian interference, no yep. Russian connection. Okay. Also, the third, which is the most famous, is Lieutenant, Gen Lieutenant General Michael Flynn, who, again, is indicted for a process crime and was indicted not for Russian collusion, but for not filling out his paperwork properly for the incoming president to become National Security Advis Council advisor for unregistered foreign, lo foreign lobbying for the Turkish government. Okay? The fourth person who was indicted was the former attorney to the president, Michael Cohen, who we have on the record now lying at least 15 times to Congress under two separate testimonies. Now, he was not indicted for Russian collusion. He was not indicted for interference. He was indicted for tax medallion fraud, tax fraud, and wire fraud. Now, those are the four Americans so far. There might be more. There probably won't be. Actually, the fifth. I'm sorry. There was a fifth. Obama's White House counsel was just recently indicted. Yeah, no, that's true. Yeah. I'm sorry. In the last week. Yep for unregistered foreign lobbying, taking a $4 million wire transfer that was laundered through Cyprus for, again, with Paul Manafort, essentially being the lawyer on file. His, his criminal trial is still pending. Yeah. He has pleaded innocent. Those are the five major Americans. Now, 
you said 30 indictments. The rest of them yeah. are foreign yeah. Russian citizens that we could indict the entire country of Russia for essentially colluding against America because every day they're exercise, they're, they're a, the whole country is registered as a foreign adversary. So we just picked 25 people that were running Russian troll farms. Now the five things that I told you could have been done with, it, with just telling the Department of Justice to do their job. Bob Mueller was not needed for $30 million creating a public assassination campaign against a president that was originally based on faulty intelligence. And so, you, see, you know, I think you and I can agree yeah. they're doing that for two years and exacerbating this Russian narrative where Congressman Adam Schiff, chairman of the House Intelligence Committee now said, there has yet to be released evidence that is material of Russian collusion against the Trump campaign. We're still waiting for that, what that is. There are 1,800 articles amongst the four major newspapers in America, USA Today, the Washington Post, the LA Times, and the New York Times, 1,800 articles alluding or directly connecting Donald Trump and the Trump campaign to, to committing treason with a foreign adversary. You gotta ask the question, is there, was it really necessary to hijack our whole public narrative for two years using $30 million of U.S. taxpayer to go after five people, none of which committed Russian collusion at all, instead had their own personal crimes that they committed? I believe it was a public assassination campaign that we paid for that now Donald Trump has rose up against and has triumphed. So how many genders are there? There's so many. The way that the... So many. Not so many. The chromosomes actually break down with intersex genders and the way that it actually happens. That is the starting point that you learn in like fifth grade. But when you actually in real experiments, you learn that the way that data breaks down when it comes to... Can you give me a number genders, or not? Number? A number? You have two. That's sixth grade science. When you move on, there are hundreds so, of different so what you, categories. So what you learn in sixth grade becomes less true as you get older? That's like gravity big, that, becomes that less true? That is a basic building Newton's block third law becomes less true? In order to understand the concept of gender, when you break it down into actual gender experiments and sex when it comes to chromosomes related. and sex, it breaks down into hundreds of different categories that actually differentiate between just two genders. What you're saying is there are facts and you don't believe in there being a Yes, I am saying that there are this facts. This is a scientific fact that you, if you talk to any biologist, you will learn. So in biology, they teach you, you that there's XX and XY chromosomes. So, so give me a number of how many genders there are. Hundreds, many. It it, unlimited, down, right? It breaks so down I, it's so anything many more you categories. want to be anything you feel. No, it's what scientists determine given specific X, categories. X, X, Y. Why do you need a number if you're Bingo. Arguing? Why do you need a number? That's a great question. You literally have no idea how it works. You're because then you could self-identify to be anything you want at any time. Literally, biologists are saying that this oh, is the way so, the gender actually so, breaks so, down. So you're, you would accept the argument that you can self-identify to be anything at any time? Yes, because literally okay. biologists that, are That's what's wrong gender. with not having a number. There are hundreds of different numbers. But again, you don't have a number. I just want to recap. Hundreds. There's hundreds. hundreds of different so where would you put? Data okay, so the data breaks down in two very simple, predominant categories: X, X, and X, Y. And that's no. 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 Oh, so there's not male and female. I think what happens is you don't understand science and science. Oh, I don't. Backing, oh, okay. So, so. And you just want to so, so put I can, forth this so like fascist can, so, simple. Oh, fascist you know, simple. Here we go. That's 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 that, interesting. That will keep you. So, so what is fascist about saying there's two genders? Is you're just being completely not faithful to what actual science is telling you? No, you science is quite simple. That there's an oppressive narrative. Oh, oppressive. About how you think so, and now I'm oppressive. Believe. How am I being oppressive? This is the, it's, the truth comes out eventually. So, how am I being yeah, oppressive? Yeah, you're being oppressive. How am I being oppressive? You're being oppressive by denying people the ability to have. How am I denied anyone anything? Okay, denying people identity. People can identify however they want. I'm only going to use two genders. It's absolutely vital we expose the far left in our institutions and continue our work on campus and across the UK and in defending both free speech and conservative values. So please help us by clicking the subscribe button. Thank you.